Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at this little uh, toy grade GPS drone. This is by Hobby Tiger. Uh, they're an Amazon seller and they make some really nice, uh, they sell some really nice products on there. I've looked at some Hobby Tiger stuff in the past. It comes in a nice box. Um, it's, the model number is H301S, so it's kind of got a Hubson naming convention, but uh, I don't believe Hubson has anything to do with this. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen from Hubson. It's got all its stats and info on the box there. Uh, but it's, it's a really uh, nice little GPS drone in a toy grade class. Uh, some of the things I really like about it is you know, it holds position really well for a little brushed uh, GPS drone. It also has a motorized cam as you can see here. So you can tilt it down, oh, maybe 45 degrees or a little more and all the way level. It doesn't actually go up at all, but uh, you know, I do like that. Now it is Wi-Fi, so here's the Wi-Fi, you know, antenna. The Wi-Fi, one of the few complaints I have is the Wi-Fi is considerably laggy, laggier than most. But on a, uh, uh, you know, on a, on a toy, the Wi-Fi, you know, it typically does that. And for a GPS drone, it's less important because you're not going to be moving real fast. And it does have three uh, speed rates. And it gets, you know, it gets moving pretty decent in the highest one. Uh, the camera, though, films pretty good at 720p. It records to an SD card. It comes with a little four gigabyte. Instructions says it doesn't include one, but it does. A little four gigabyte card in there. And, uh, you know, it takes pretty good video. I was pretty pleased with the video quality. It's pretty wide uh, video, too. It's not real narrow. Uh, but it does uh, have a little bit of wobble, wobble, excuse me, and a little bit of jello, but it's very small. Now, if you're going to be going the highest rate and moving along, it's going to obviously be worse. Um, but it works pretty well. You know, I, I do like it. I mean, it comes with a, a 1,000 milliamp hour 1S LiPo, so a pretty small uh, battery um, 1S, you know. Um, Usually you see 2S on GPS of so this, you know, but it gets, it does the job pretty good at 1S. Now, it's, it's sort of a smart battery. It's got this blue indicator lights and they will go up as it's charging and of course down as it's discharging. Um, and it's pretty neat. I mean, you, you actually turn it on and back off. It powers the, the quadcopter. You can see the lights go out there. Um, it doesn't have a discharging, so it's not a true smart battery, but it does like show you the, the progress of charging and discharging. And uh, that's pretty cool. You don't see that in the toy grade stuff at all. It comes with the USB cable, which you use to charge it. It takes about an hour to charge it, so not too long of a wait to charge it. Comes with a full set of uh, spare, uh, uh, not spare, but a full set of spare props and some extra gears um, up here. It comes with a screwdriver and a uh, SD uh, card, memory card reader, and of course, I said the full set of uh, prop guards. It also comes with an extra set of landing gear in case you would lose the landing gear it would pop off or break which is not likely but you know uh, it does come with them so you know these Amazon stuff you, you typically see a little more uh, extra stuff than if you ordered straight from China for something like this and it comes with a really nice really nice uh, game style controller this is, has a rechargeable battery in it you just don't see that in this stuff either so you just plug it in here into the USB, the micro USB, and charge this up. And it has really neat indicators. See that? It lights this up, telling you what uh, you know, what mode you're in and stuff, like your speed race. You have to bind it first. See, it's got first blue, second green, three red. Um, really, really nice. Here's your return to home and your auto takeoff and landing. Up here on the back, you've got your angle up and down. That's to move the camera, tilt it. You've got your uh, one press does your photo, long press does your video. One annoying thing is it does it beeps nonstop in the app when you're recording. I do also think you need to initiate the recording from the controller. It will record it to your phone and it'll record it to the SD card. If you press it in the app, it doesn't beep. So I don't know if you do it from there, if it'll also record the SD card. It may only record the feed to the camera. So I would always use this to start it. And this is your follow me mode here. And uh, you know, that works decent. I, I use that and you can do it from the app also. You can see it's blinking follow me mode. And it followed me down the street pretty good. One time I got a little uh, 
confused and did a big circle on me the first time I tried it, but I'm gonna try, I've not filmed the flight review, I'm gonna try to show that. Because on this battery, you only advertise it about eight minutes, so it doesn't have a real long flight time. I'd say it's pretty accurate on the flight time. It's probably around eight, um, you know, depending on what rate you're in and how much hovering you're doing, how much flying around you're doing, so. Really, really nice controller. It does have headless mode if you want to use that. You can get into the trimmer and trim, but you don't need to trim unless you're in, uh, in altitude hold mode only. I don't remember. The, there's a way to turn off the GPS, but I don't think anybody's going to be doing that. So overall, this is a nice little drone. Now, whenever you start it up, at least the first time I did, you, I needed to cal you know, I want you to calibrate the compass, and it'll say it in the app. You do like one full turn of your body, and then you turn it. One of the lights will go out in the front, and the ones will stay blinking. I think in the back might be vice versa. And then you do a turn with the nose down. I found that, you know, if you're like me, sometimes I don't like spinning in a circle because I get dizzy very easy. They just turn in the craft in your hands like this and then turn it like this, did it also. And it didn't, and didn't toilet bowl, it worked fine. So you probably don't have to do a circle. You probably can just do it in your hands if you don't want to actually spin around in a circle. So overall, the things I like about this, you know, the motorized uh, camera, the camera's pretty good. The rechargeable controller is something you just don't see in this in this class of stuff. So you know, there's a few things that you see with this that's not normal, and a sort of smart battery with the indicator lights and stuff. So this has some things that you don't typically see. And though I don't typically go over the instruction manual, I do want to mention this is probably the best instruction manual I've ever seen. Uh, maybe it's not for Amazon, but from the Chinese produced stuff, this is an absolutely amazing instruction manual. So I got to hand out the Ren who's the owner of uh, Hobby Tiger for uh, you know, making sure it's a good instruction manual. It does mention the calibration here, you know, up and out, we'll do the gyro calibration. Up and in, we'll let you uh, begin the uh, compass calibration if it doesn't ask you to do it. It may not ask it every time. It did the first time I powered it on. I don't know if it will do it every, every time. It didn't yesterday, but I went ahead and did it. And it comes up an app, and then it tells you what to do. So that's a really thorough app. The app that you're gonna get is the uh, the Hobby Tiger app, I'll put a screenshot up here and you just go to control. Make sure you connect to the Wi-Fi first. So the procedure is turn on the drone, turn on the controller, bind it with the up and down the stick, then go into your Wi-Fi on your phone, connect to the Hobby Tiger Wi-Fi, and then lastly, open up the app, go to your controls. I don't think it's gonna allow, maybe it will. And it's, you know, it's a little, it's nicely skinned. It looks very good. It's got your power for the controller, uh, your, that's your phone power here, and your the drone, and it's got, you know, uh, VR mode, on-screen controls, all that, it's pretty typical. Um, I don't know if I'll record the screen whenever I fly it, I may just, I'll probably just inc include the SD card video, but, uh, all right guys, I think that covers it all, I don't want to blab too long here, so let's move along now to the flight review with footage. Okay guys, so I have the Hobby Tiger H301S Ranger GPS drone on the helipad here. I'm going to go ahead and take it up. Got everything connected. Um, I didn't uh, ca uh, calibrate the compass. So I'm going to double check here. It's not asking me to. And I've got solid blue in the rear and solid white in the front. So thankfully it is not asking to calibrate every single time. It will definitely do it the very first time you power it up. You should be okay unless you drastically change locations. If you go 100 miles or somewhere, make sure you calibrate it again if it doesn't ask you. Now, the controller's bound up. These, these lights are kind of difficult to see in the daytime, so be mindful of that. But I got it connected to the app. I got the video feed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it up here. We'll record some video. I'm gonna initiate that by doing a long press here on the controller. Okay, and here it's beeping. It's kind of annoying, like I said, but it's letting you know that it's recording. So it kind of reminds me of a lot of quadcopters uh, do that when they're in headless mode. So let's go ahead and we'll uh, go ahead and take it up. It says I have a you know, ready to fly. It doesn't give me a satellite count. But I had to wait a couple minutes before I had a GPS lock. So I press the auto launch. And it only goes up maybe, what, three feet, four feet, and then it will level out. See, I am in speed rate two. Let's go to speed rate three. I think the yaw does get a little bit quicker. There's a gentle breeze here from right to left today, but not a whole lot. You can see it's adjusting, but overall it's doing a pretty good job. Let's take it up here. 
Let's see how it holds position. Like I said, I've, I've been pretty impressed that I'm flying on a much windier day. Looks like there might be a very, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's a very, very small toilet bowl. I don't know. I think it may have just been adjusting to the wind. They did calibrate it just yesterday and the day before, so the compass should still be good, assuming that it keeps the settings. And since it doesn't ask me to calibrate it again, that tells me that it's obviously keeping its settings. The way it is, uh, it is toilet bowling on me a little bit, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring it, even though it didn't ask me to, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down here and uh, press auto landing. Now that's a, that's auto landing. That's not return to home, so don't uh, pay attention to where that is compared to the tarmac. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop record the uh, video recording here. Just tap it. I actually need to hold it. If you tap it, it takes a photo. Here we go. And I'm gonna go. I'll be right back. I'm gonna do the compass calibration to shorten the video. I'll just go ahead and do it real quick here. I just want to make sure it's not toilet bowling at all. It looked like it might have been doing a slight toilet bowl. So if that's the case, I would recommend to uh, calibrate it maybe every flight. Then so I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I did the compass calibration. Just it took, I should have just recorded it. It took like 20 seconds. I just had the worst vertigo when I spin around in circles. I feel like I'm gonna uh, stammer around and stuff from spinning in circles. I, I just, the older I get, the more I can't spin around in circles without getting some vertigo. So it's all calibrated. It said on the, on the app here, it told me to do it level and then face down at one spin each and it was right on it knew it and it was ready to go so hopefully that that uh, resolves that small toilet bowl was doing so I'm gonna go ahead and press down on the record button again okay, it's beeping again let's go ahead and take it back up do an auto takeoff well, that looks really really good now really good let's take it a little higher you can see it's going to kind of fly back and try to catch the position where I let off the throttle and the pitch. Look at that. I mean, it wasn't too bad before, but it's, it's rock solid now. For a toy drone, that's really good. Now, it is a rather calm day, and that's going to certainly help out. Now, I, I said I'm able to fly this by Wi Fi FPV, and I don't typically do that, but there is a considerable amount of lag, so you've got to be mindful of that because. You know, if you, it's going to be behind a half second or so, maybe a little more than that at times, especially the farther away you get. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn it, fly a little ways down the street here. I can see some bounce, you know, and stuff going on, but it's not a video. Is pretty good. It's not like a jello fest, like I call it at times. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a return to home. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the app is there is a beginner's mode. I would advise you turn that off unless you're a beginner. It's going to really cap your distance and your, uh, and your height. I don't remember what it was, but it was doing it to me. Even if you turn that off, you've got to make sure that you uh, set your altitude and distance higher than the defaults, even with it off, because I was hitting it like a wall and it would fly back because I still had the distance uh, capped pretty low. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to press the return to home. And it should fly up, I believe it was, I'm going to double check in here. I want to think I had it set to, uh, well, it's not bringing it up in the app at the moment. But I believe it's set to 30 meters. Here it is flying over. It is zipping by. Let's see if it tries to correct itself because it's right overhead now. And I've got the uh, tarmac here. And it's going to come on down. You got a lot of beeping going on because we got the uh, recording beep and it does a beep when it's doing return to home. Let's see how accurate it is on that. It looks like it's going to be off by a decent amount here. Unless it flies over. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and press the return. I think you press the return to home again to cancel it even though it landed. Now it's still recording. I'm gonna go ahead and long press here and turn off the, the beeping. I tell you what, that beeping is really annoying. Um, that would probably be something I would try to remove from future ones because that can really drive you crazy. But the only real complaints I have is, you know, that beeping and of course the, uh, 
The proprietary battery would be nice if that wasn't proprietary, but it's a pretty nice battery. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'll start recording again. Okay, and let's go ahead and just take off again. Now I've done return to landing, uh, return to home a few times the last few days and as it seems to always be the case in my videos, whenever I film the review it seems like the return to home is always worse than in my practice uh, flights. Uh, it was, it was, that was the worst one of the return to homes and for a toy it's fine. It doesn't have anything with GPS, there's no downward sensors, cameras, anything like that to help it figure out where it's landing. But look, that's a nice position hold. Let's see if we got, we got, we got about half a battery. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, try to follow me. Let's see what that is. I'm just going to, it's kind of turned itself. Let's see if it follows me. I had, worked pretty good for me yesterday, actually. And there it's moving. Wave at the camera there. I don't know if I got, let me see. Well, that's one I didn't show you guys is the, the motorized camera. Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. Let's put it all the way down. There's all the way up, so let's move it. With the lag, it's gonna be a bit harder to see, to adjust that. Okay, let's move it. Let's, I should be in the, the video now. Now let's wave at you. Well, it's easy to forget stuff like just simple things like uh, showing you guys the motorized camera. I think that's really, really cool. So it's following me down the street. The follow me mode seems to work quite well. Uh, I did have it kind of do a big loop-de-loop -loop on me one day. It seemed to have gotten confused. Let's walk back this way now. All right. Yeah, works really well. Very nice for a toy drone. Okay, let's go, I'm just gonna press the follow me mode here and it's trying to come back and figure out where I'm at. There, it's doing a bit of a loop-de-loop. -loop. See a little toilet bowl? It, and that's just in the follow me mode. Every once in a while, that's the second time it's done that in my test. Let's see, did I get the follow me mode canceled? It looks like it's still moving, so let's try. See if we got it canceled now. I think so. You can see here that the camera's pointed down and it's still beeping because it's still recording. So let's go ahead and move the camera up. And there you can see it moving up. Hopefully you can see that on my head cam. Let's take it up overhead and kind of look down real quick here. Let's, let's, put the, let's go over here. There's a lot of glare from that sun. Let's see if we got it down. Now it's only 45 degrees, so I'm gonna walk out this way and hopefully I show up. Here we go. You can't do a complete overhead shot. That's, that sun's gonna make it impossible to see. So let's go over here. There we go. Now hopefully we can see a little better. But boy, that sun's really gonna be a, a lot of glare in my in my camera. I'm sure, guys. So if you can't see it because of the sun glare, I apologize. It's, sun's always a problem. If it's too low, it makes shadows and hard to see. If it's, if it's up overhead, it makes for better filming, but then you get the glare when you're trying to film actually a drone in the air. But it makes for better recording for the drone itself. Okay, we're getting pretty low on battery. It's not hit low battery yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera straight back to level. Hopefully you guys got an idea how this camera looks in the side-by-side -side here from the SD card. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, there is some wobble, there is a little bit of jello. It's not bad, at least not in my initial tests. Um, especially on a day like today where there's no wind. Now, you, when the battery gets low and it's relatively close, I think it just tries to land itself. I don't know what the distance on that is. Obviously, you're very far out, it's gonna fly back. Yesterday it hit low battery, you know, somewhere like this here, it's, it's flying over now. So here it comes in and it's going to land. I got a red low battery here, so it did fly over from there. 
And Rue, look at that. Did, well, there it tipped over. See, so it was gonna land without him tipping over in this uneven grass. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Hold down until we stop. All right. I'm really impressed with this little guy. I mean, don't expect professional quality video out of it, but I mean, it, it, it does what it's advertised at doing, and it does it quite well. Um, this, like I said, is available on Amazon. Um, I think there was a coupon on the on the, the product page. I think it was around $120 is what I paid for it. Um, you know, I mean, from Amazon, that's not bad. Um, maybe a little high. I'd like to see it closer to $100. Maybe that'll come down in price. But if it does what it does. You got Prime, you know, shipping two days. And of course, you got Amazon's actually customer service if you have any problems. That's always worth a little extra money for the peace of mind. So that should wrap up this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be sure to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you press the bell down there so you know when I post a new video. And as always, guys, have a good day. The power of the dark side, side, side.